Hello everyone, this is Dr. Zaidi. Welcome to my YouTube channel, ZTube. In this video, I'm gonna discuss the single product cost volume profit analysis with an example. So let's start with the example. Z Lab provides X-ray services to its patients. Z charges $100 per X-ray. The lab's variable cost per X-ray is $25. Z incurs $15,000 in the total fixed cost. The lab wants to perform break-even analysis to estimate the future profitability. Now we have three things to calculate. In part A, we need to calculate the break-even point. In part B, there is a minor change where lab is trying to drop the price and see if the break-even point will increase or decrease. So they're planning to drop the price to $75. And in part C, they're still keeping the price at $100, but instead they are evaluating some other options to increase the efficiency, which will reduce the X-ray cost or the variable cost per unit by $5. However, it will increase the fixed cost by $3,000. So you need to calculate break-even point in these three options. So let's start with Option number one, calculate the break-even point with the given information. Now, if you see the question, fixed cost was provided $15,000. Contribution margin per unit is your selling price minus variable cost per unit. So $100 was the selling price minus $25 variable cost per unit. That gives 75. So 15,000 over 75 is 200. So that's a break-even point in unit, all right? you need to sell at least 200 units to reach the break-even point, which you can see in a graph on the right-hand side here where total cost intersects the sales. It says 200 points, uh, 200 units. You need to sell in order to reach that break-even point, break-even point A. Now, if you need to find out break-even point in dollar, there's two ways you can find out. One way, you can divide fixed cost by contribution margin ratio. You already know contribution margin ratio is your contribution margin divided by sales. So in this case, uh, we don't have a total contribution margin given, but we have the contribution margin per unit or the sales price is given and variable cost per unit is given. So we can calculate the contribution margin ratio if we divide contribution margin per unit by the selling price instead of dividing the total contribution margin by the total sales. So we can calculate that way or because we already calculated break-even point in units, if we simply multiply those 200 by the selling price, which is $100, we can calculate the break-even point in dollar. So the easiest way at this point is break-even point in units is already calculated 200, multiply by the selling price, $100. You need to make $20,000 sales in order to reach the break-even point. So break-even point in dollar is 20,000. So that's part A. Now in part B, it's saying assume that the market condition requires the, the re reduction in the sales price. So the Z Corporation is, or the Z Lab is evaluating uh, whether they should drop the sales price to $75 or not. So what's going to happen if they decide to drop the sales price to $75, keeping the other things constant? So as you can look at it, the break-even point in unit, which is fixed cost over contribution margin per unit, nothing happens, in, uh, your, nothing happens on your fixed cost or variable cost per unit. However, your sales price dropped from $100 to $75, which has increased your break-even point in unit because your denominator shrink, right? 15,000 on the numerator and now 75 minus 25 is $50. Before it was $100 minus 25, which was $75. So because the denominator shrink, the numerator stays constant, your break-even point increased to 300. So now you have to sell 300 units. If you see the graph on the right-hand side, you need to sell 100 more units to reach break-even point. Here, 300, okay? What is happening is sales price is decreasing from sales A to sales B. When sales price decrease, the sales curve shift rightwards or downwards. 
So here the sales curve shifted downwards and which has increased the break-even point. If you remember from my break-even analysis, my other video, the sales has an indirect relationship with break-even point. Whenever the sales price increases, break-even point decreases. Whenever the sales price decreases, break-even point increases, which can be shown with this example. Now, break-even point in dollar, again, you can either do fixed cost divided by contribution margin ratio, or since you already calculated break-even point in units, you can multiply this by the selling price, which is in this case is $75 instead of $100 in the previous case. So three times, 300 times $75 is 22,500. So you need to sell $22,500 worth of goods in order to reach the break-even point. So the sales dollar amount and the quantity amount of break-even point has gone up, which suggests that dropping the price is not a good idea because your break-even point is going to increase. It's going, going to take longer time to reach break-even point and ultimately make some profit. So in this part, Z wants to keep the sales price at $100, uh, but the lab is evaluating some other options to increase the efficiency. Now, if, if the lab changes the analysis process, it may reduce the variable cost by $5, However, the fixed costs are going to go up by $3,000. So if you can see in the break-even point equation here, your new fixed cost is $18,000. $15,000 was the original fixed cost, plus the fixed cost has gone up by $3,000. So 15 plus three is $18,000. Similarly, if you see variable cost per unit has gone down, the original variable cost per unit was $25, but because uh, they are um, trying to put this new process in place, which will reduce the cost per unit by $5. So 25 minus five is $20. So new variable cost is $20 now. So 18,000 over $80 is 225, which can be shown here in the graph, 225 units needs to, uh, needed to be sold in order to reach the break-even point. Now for break-even point in dollars, similarly, you're going to follow uh, the processes you followed in the previous um, uh, parts. So break-even point was $225 here times $100 is the selling price. So yeah, the Z Lab has to sell $22,500 um, worth uh, of services in order to reach the break-even point. Now, the interesting thing you want to see is the graph. Here, the other graphs, the part A graph and part two graph, they, show, they have not shown a simultaneous changes in two things. This graph on, uh, of part C shows the simultaneous changes of total fixed cost and total cost. So in, uh, in step one, if you see the total fixed cost has gone up from A to C. This purple line is the new total fixed cost. The blue line was the original total fixed cost. So the original total fixed cost was 15,000 and it has gone up by 5,000. So hence the line has shifted upward. When the total fixed cost line shifts upward, it also shifts your total cost curve, right? So the total cost line, which was originally TCA has gone up and shifted upwards, but parallel to the original line. So which is a dotted line here. If you see the dotted line here and the red arrow right this, it shows that there is, an in, there is a shift in the total cost line. So now the total cost line starts at the intercept, Y intercept, where your total fixed cost C intersect the Y axis, right? So this is your new total cost line. However, there is a change in your variable cost per unit too, right? If there was no change in the variable cost per unit, this dotted line should have been your final line and this should have been your new break-even point where your uh, dotted line meets sales. However, because your variable cost per unit is also declining, so then again, the dotted line shift downwards, right? So you can see from the red arrow, now the new total cost line is total cost C or TCC. That purple solid line is the new total cost line, which starts at total fixed cost C wherever total cost lines meet your sales 
it's going to be your break-even point. So if you look at the purple line, solid purple line, where it meets sales, which is a solid blue line, is your new break-even point. At this break-even point, your quantity is 225 units and the, the dollar amount is 22,500 units, which suggests that compared to the original model, which is BEPA, you had to sell 200 units to reach break-even point. Now you have to sell 225 units to reach break-even point. So obviously you're not going to proceed with, with this new process. This is not suggested because you're, you have to sell more in order to reach break-even point. Instead of $20,000, you have to make $22,500 sale in order to reach break-even point. Also you have to, uh, you have to, your number of, activity levels or the quantity or the units have gone up from 200 to 225. So therefore it is not recommended to proceed with this new procedure. That completes this question. Thank you for watching my video. Please subscribe my channel for live updates.